All right, I'm here today to show you the layup of the last fiberglass floor timber that we have to make that ties the framing from the port side to the starboard side on our 270 series 43 foot Alden schooner. The construction has been changed around by myself to be plastic frames and fiberglass floor timbers. Now it's a, it's a new system and we're here to show you exactly how we make these floor timbers and the purpose for them. Now, if I pick this floor timber up, you can see that it's got a tang on the bottom of it. This tang on the bottom of it lays on the after face of the stem and this is the web that ties one side to the other and the plastic frames will be bolted onto this little wing here on both sides. There's an instruction sheet that comes in the kit of pumps here and uh, we followed the directions and cut the little tube that connects to the pump to the proper length and installed it into the hardener here. And now what we're gonna do is prime the pump because it's full of air right now and we wanna make sure that we pump it enough time so that the, it comes out without any spitting or any air bubbles in it. Now that has accomplished the task right there. That pump is primed properly right now. I'm just gonna push the pump all the way down and it's already been pumped a couple of times and you can see that it pumped fully without any spitting or any air bubbles coming out. So now that pump is primed properly. These pumps meter the glue out to a five to one mix. So this pump pumps five times the amount of glue that this pump pumps. So it's a one pump with this container and one pump with that container and that makes the proper mix. And here we go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pump a number of pumps in individual containers here until we get it up to the volume that we're trying to mix. One pump of the glue into one container and then one pump of the hardener into the other container. And what we're doing is trying to get a measurement on the container that we can pour the glue up to that mark afterwards. So, now that the glue has been pumped into the containers, I'm gonna reach around with a magic marker here and make a little magic marker line on the container at the top of the glue level. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to the hardener and mark it onto the outside of the container like that with a magic marker. And it's just by volumes that are marked onto the pot. This has got five times the volume that this pot has got in it. The pumps work great for mixing small volumes of glue, but you have to use another method to mix large volumes like this. Uh, you can do it by weight, or you can do it by volume like we're gonna do it here. Okay, so what I've done is just taken this roll of 1708 fiberglass cloth. So this is our little sheet metal form that we're actually gonna lay the cloth into. And right now I've just set it down on top of the cloth and I'm just gonna draw a line around it approximately an inch over size. It doesn't have to be perfectly accurate or anything like that. We just want the cloth to hang past our little jig here. So I'm just gonna trace around this about an inch out all the way around. I'm gonna add a little bit to it here, six inches. This is gonna be the cloth that makes the tang that lays down against the back of the stem, like that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna cut this out of the cloth, and then I'm gonna use it to retrace to make a number more. All right, we've finished cutting out the 12 layers of 1708 fiberglass cloth that's required to make this floor timber. Now, this stuff is a biaxial cloth. It's got fibers going in this direction and fibers going in this direction, and they're not woven together. They're laid over each other individually, so they're not woven together like woven roving. And it has on it a very light layer of scattergrain mat on the back side. Now, when you resin this cloth out, you resin it out from this side so it doesn't disturb that scattergrain mat. So there's the 12 layers that we're gonna saturate. And now I'd like to just show you this little jig that we've got here. Now, we've made it partially from wood on a table here and partially from sheet metal. And uh, we've nailed the sheet metal down onto the table here and we've slipped some wedges under the edges of the sheet metal here where it's kinked right here. And the idea of that is to match the angle that we need in order to bolt on the plastic frames. 
Now this is the angle that's required here in order to get the tang to lay onto the back side of the stem. Well, right now I'm going to introduce you to Ken and Beth. They are the glue people and they're going to be mixing and saturating the cloth and applying it into the mold here. All right, this is the first mix right here and we're mixing five parts of the resin to one part of hardener. So we've dumped our metered amounts of resin and hardener into the mixing pot and now we're just going to mix it up with a stick and the longer you mix it the better it goes off so we're going to mix it for approximately a minute here so now Beth is saturating the first piece of cloth here and we've got the uh, structural side of it up so it doesn't disturb the mat as you saturate it here and then what's going to happen we're going to pick it up and flip it over and put it into the mold and she's going to add a little bit more resin on it, quite a bit more. So you probably noticed that the mold was covered with packaging tape and the reason for that is, is so that the fiberglass doesn't stick to the mold, it just allows us to be able to remove the uh, completed fiberglass layup from the mold very easily. So Beth is now saturating the second piece of cloth and we're doing all the saturation from the side that's structural, not from the side with the scatter grain mat on it. Just makes it quite a bit easier. And now we're transferring that one to the mold and she's squeezed that into position and now she'll probably take her squeegee again and go over that, the mat side of it was actually going to suck some resin out of the first layer so we didn't have to saturate the cloth on the other side like we did the first piece. It's as simple as that and that one's now complete and we're going to put one more layer on the table. We're on to our, probably our sixth piece here now going into the mold and uh, you know as we resin it we look at the cloth to see if it starts to show a clearness to it and that shows you that you're saturating it with the right amount of resin. Now we're mixing these batches in small batches so that it doesn't create a tremendous amount of heat in the mixing pot over the course of time. But after you get it mixed, you want to get it out and use it and get it out of that mixing pot as fast as you can. Okay, we're saturating now the tenth layer. It's just about complete. We don't quite have enough resin in our mixing pot to saturate the next two layers, so we're going to make one more mix. Ken's going to mix one more time. Now he's going to pour that up to that original black magic marker line that we put on that cup. See, so that we have five parts of resin to one part of hardener. This certainly saves us a lot of time because we don't have to use the pumps. It, the pumps are great for small amounts and this pouring method up to the line is great for larger amounts like this and it's very similar to measuring it out by weight. All right, now that all 12 layers have been placed into the mold, we're just gonna put the caps on it now. Let's pick this right up and put it in position here. And Ken's gonna put it exactly where he wants it. So basically right now what we're doing is adding the cap pieces right now that are gonna apply the pressure. And Ken's adding some clamps onto it to squeeze out the excess resin very much like a vacuum bagging system, except it's just a mechanical method of applying pressure to that spacer block, which in turn applies a pressure to the cap piece to help squeeze the resin out and saturate the cloth at the same time. So that completes the layup of the last floor timber that we have to make for our Alden 270 series 43 foot schooner that we're building here. And uh, we've laid it up with total boat all-purpose epoxy resin, five to one mix, and 1708 fiberglass cloth, 12 layers. And I'd just like to show you, this is the last one that we pulled off a of mold right here. Now, it's got a tang at the bottom that lays on the back side of the stem. These two wings here are where the plastic frames are gonna be bolted onto the fiberglass floor timber. And uh, these things are incredibly strong, not all that heavy or difficult to build. They can be made at home in the backyard without a vacuum bagging system. There's no special equipment here we've used or anything. We're applying pressure to it with just a series of uh, wooden like springs almost with clamps on the end and clamping this 
pot down so it squeezes all the resin out and that's a completed unit right there right now once it's gone off we'll be able to just pop all the pieces off the thing will come out it'll have a little excess cloth on it we're going to saw off with a band saw all the way around and that'll be a completed unit